guys, it's Trina and this is another audiobooks review video. So this year I have been doing one of these wrap up videos for every five audiobooks that I listen to. I already talk about all the books that I read or listen to in my monthly wrap ups or in Goodreads reviews. So that's where I talk about like my enjoyment of the book or the series, the characters, the writing, just my rating of the book overall. And in these videos I talk about just the narration and whether or not I liked it, didn't like it, did it add to the story experience, would I recommend listening to audio versus reading the print book, and are there any formatting differences. So this video is just talking about the narration of these audiobooks, and I will link down below anywhere else that I have talked about these books if you're wanting to know more full reviews. So a couple of things that are different this time is, first of all, instead of reviewing five audiobooks, I am reviewing six because three of them are all part of the same trilogy. They all have the same narrator, and I wanted to wait and be able to review them all together and this time I'm also going to try to do ratings for the narration. I was asked in a comment last time if I could please rate the audio versus the book itself and show you guys like a comparison of you know how my ratings differ and I have tried to do that in the past in one of my earlier ones of these videos and I didn't really like it because honestly I find it hard to rate audio narration on a same like five star scale as a book itself because like to me the audio is either good or bad. You got two ratings. It's good, it's bad. Maybe it's fine. But I'm gonna try to put that on a five star scale this time. We'll see how it works. Let me know if you like it. First up today I'm gonna be talking about the audiobook for The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This is a YA historical fiction about a main character Monty who's about to embark on a tour of England with his sister and his best friend Percy who he actually has a crush on. A little bit of romance, a little bit of an adventure. I did enjoy the book itself and the audiobook is narrated by Christian Coulson who is the actor that played Tom Riddle in the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets movie so you may recognize his voice from that. I thought that he did a fantastic job with this audiobook. He really embodied the personality of the main character Monty. Monty is like this roguish snarky smarmy guy and yeah Christian Coulson just really brought that attitude and personality into reading it. I thought that his personality really brought the story to life. It was a very very enjoyable thing to listen to. It very much kept me entertained. I had absolutely zero issues with his voicing or his standard narration of dialogue descriptions anything like that so I would give him a five star rating in terms of the narration itself whereas the book got a four star rating. Now as far as any formatting differences between the print and the audio there is a map in the front of the print book which shows you all the locations that are traveled to in this story. Other than that you're not missing out on anything. I would definitely definitely recommend this audio version. I thought that it was fantastic. Then I listened to Girl Out of Water by Laura Silverman. This one is a YA contemporary romance-ish story about a girl who lives in California, has to uproot her life and move in with her aunt and her younger cousins because her aunt has been in an accident and needs help caring for her cousins. It's kind of a story of like self-discovery. The narrator of this audiobook was Laurence Bouvard and she was okay. Her voicing was fine, her standard reading was fine, but I didn't think that her tone matched the personality or attitude of the main character that I was getting from how she was written. The writing is still in the audiobook, like you can hear the words that were written on page, and it seemed to me like this main character was a little bit mopey, like in a more sad way about some of the things that were happening in her life, and yet the narrator kept reading her in this really high-pitched, whiny tone, and it made her seem a little bit more immature than what the book was telling me that the character was. So to me this was a disconnect. I don't know, I guess I would give her like three or three and a half stars because it just didn't mesh up with what my head was telling me this main character was like. The book itself, I did give it four stars. I did enjoy listening to this one on audio, but I don't think that it necessarily had like a huge, you know, improvement over the print book. So. I wouldn't really recommend one over the other. I think they'd both be fine. Next, I listened to Like a River Glorious by Ray Carson, which is the second book in the Gold Seer trilogy. This is another historical YA. It's more of a survival adventure type of story. It's set during the California Gold Rush period, following a character who is traveling across the country to get to California because she has an ability where she can sense where gold is in the ground. This audiobook was narrated by Erin Mallon, and to me, her voice acting and narration was just so fitting 
for this series and like its tone and its setting and everything. She reads the main character with a slight southern accent, which is very appropriate because this character is from, I think, Georgia. And the book is all first person point of view from this main character and the narrator reads it all with this kind of like wavery, worried quality. I thought it fit very well. There was just something about this audiobook, like the tone of her reading and the way that she read it just embodied autumn and like the fall season and it had just turned fall when I listened to this and I was just like so into it. It was just like the perfect atmospheric seasonal read. So that really added to my enjoyment of listening to this one on audio. Now my critique of her narrating was I felt like all of the female voices and all of the male voices were exactly the same. She did not do very distinct voices, especially in the group of main characters, but I was never confused about who was speaking because the writing was done so well in terms of like he said, she said, so like I always knew which character was speaking. For this one I would rate the audio four stars. I really enjoyed it other than I can see the fact that I don't think she does very distinct voices. The book itself I also gave four stars and I do have to say I probably, if I had just read the book, I might have given it three or three and a half stars. I do think the narration kind of made this story for me just because of that atmospheric feeling I was getting from it. And as far as any formatting differences, there is again a map in the front of this book. I don't think it's totally necessary, but if you love book maps, you may want to check out the print version. Other than that, I definitely recommend the audio because it just totally made the story for me. And then finally, I am reviewing the entire Conspiracy of Us trilogy by Maggie Hall. There are three books in this series. They are The Conspiracy of Us, Map of Fates, and The Ends of the World. And this is a YA adventure, kind of contemporary story. It's about an ordinary girl who finds out she's part of an ancient secret society who are trying to follow clues to track down the lost tomb of Alexander the Great. And the audio of all three of these books were narrated by Julia Whalen. She is also the same narrator who does the audiobooks for the Girl at Midnight trilogy by Melissa Gray. And in that series, I make a note of this because it kind of affects how I feel about, you know, her voicing in this series. But in The Girl at Midnight, I found that she made the male voices very similar. They all sounded very gruff. I couldn't really tell them apart. That was my complaint. However, her voicing in the Conspiracy of Us trilogy is not all the same. Like, these are actually distinct, unique voices, and I think a big part of that is probably because all of these characters are from different parts of the world, so each of them have different accents. And so Julia Whalen actually has some talent because she was able to do very multiple accents in the same scene with so many different characters. The characters have French, Russian, British accents. I have no idea if they are truly, like, authentic sounding, but she has some talent there, and so I never had any trouble in this series recognizing who was speaking or difficulty telling the characters of Potter or anything. I enjoyed listening to these books. They definitely made it a little bit more action-packed, I guess, in my opinion. I did actually start the first book in the trilogy in print format like months and months and months ago or, or last year maybe, and I read a couple of chapters of it and then I had to give it back to the library and I just remember not having been that into it, but then once I got the audiobooks, I was into it and I was able to binge read like all three of these books back to back. So I I did really enjoy the audio experience. I think that I would give her a rating of four stars with the narration just because it's not my absolute favorite audiobook narration I have ever heard, but I have no real critiques of her job with this series. And the books were also all rated four stars each, so overall four star books, four star audio narration. I really enjoyed listening to these on audio and would recommend that format if you're able to listen to them. Those are all of the audiobooks that I am reviewing today. I like to, in these videos, end by telling you guys which one of these audiobooks was my favorite of the group, which one would I recommend the most. And my favorite here was definitely Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee because you know, the narrator just really embodied the character and he was a fun character. I enjoyed spending time with him. That really made the story for me. So yeah, I would definitely recommend it. If you're looking for an audiobook to pick up and you haven't listened to this one yet, go get your hands on it, go get your ears on it, because I really thought it was a wonderful experience. Let me know if you've listened to an audiobook that you absolutely loved recently. I'd love to know what it is. I will link you to the rest of the playlist for my audiobook reviews series in the description, as well as, you know, where else I have reviewed each of these books I'm talking about today for things besides just the narration. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the comments. Bye!